Listen to what I say in this introduction and try to spot my first mistake. I don't know if you can hear this, it's blowing an absolute gale. I've come over to Formby Beach hoping to shoot Seascape and it's not going to work at the moment. The tide's in, so hopefully it'll go out later and I'll get some good shots, but in the meantime, I'm shooting abstracts. That's right, I didn't have a clear intention to shoot abstract landscapes. Instead, I was shooting abstracts whilst waiting for the conditions to improve. If you want to shoot great abstracts, then you must concentrate on that to the exclusion of other things. Trying to shoot abstracts alongside regular landscape photography hardly ever delivers good results. And now, I'm making yet another mistake. I'm trying to find and compose abstracts using a tripod. That's never going to work well. A tripod slows you down and limits your range of movement. Instead, I should have been using the camera handheld. That way, I could have used the camera to explore ideas quickly and more easily. It's only when I find something that works that I should be using a tripod, and then only if it's needed. Instead, I'm now trying to make an abstract composition work that isn't very good. Here's the sand pattern I was shooting. Because the light wasn't very good, I had to do a lot of processing to make it clear. In my opinion, I've over-processed the image, and it still doesn't work well. Good light is vitally important in abstract landscape photography. When the light is good, it becomes much easier to get a good shot. This image was shot at the same time as the other, but facing a different direction. Also, the sand is wet so that it's reflecting the light rather than absorbing it. Wet subjects often work better in dull conditions. Finally, I'm doing something right. I'm changing location and exploring. The more I move around, the more chance I have of finding a good subject. Well, I've had a change of scene. The, uh, the beach was becoming really, really windy and it was very hard to shoot anything. So I've come down into some pine woodland here. And I'm hoping to be able to really crop in and get some detail now. But uh, the storm that we had blow through last week seems to have done quite a lot of damage. So a lot of the floors are not looking as good as it should. But then I make another mistake. I found this tree interesting, but there isn't a real composition. Rather than moving on to find something better, I try to make this work. If you find you're working too hard to get a shot, find a different shot. The best abstract shots work almost immediately. Don't waste time getting something to work that probably won't work. Well, I've just come down to the beach because the forest wasn't really working and I found some great sculpted sand. Just look at this. I've got a long lens on now and I'm going to try and capture this. So uh, we'll see how we get on. Now that the lights improved, we can see shadows and contours in the landscape. You can see that I've also taken to working handheld to explore the scene. Because of this, I can get down low with the camera to create a more interesting perspective. I'm also using the camera's tilting screen to help me see the composition. This makes working very near to the ground much easier. Now, with the light improving and a little more concentration, I was seeing more opportunities. Look for strong side lighting like this in a scene to emphasise structure in the landscape. Then, use a long lens to crop in on areas of interest. It can help you capture unusual abstracts where the subject isn't immediately obvious. This encourages the viewer to look and think more about the image whilst they try to work out what it is. In abstract landscape photography, we tend to focus on parts of the scene rather than showing the whole. This removes the context from the image because you can't see its surroundings. The viewer then needs to look more closely to understand what the image is. When done well, this happens almost automatically without the viewer realising. It grabs their attention. And with better light on the beach, and the tide having gone out, the images keep on coming. Of course, there isn't a clear definition of when something is or isn't an abstract. This next image probably sits on the extreme edge of being an abstract. Despite this, the viewer still needs to work to understand the scene because of the lighting and the scale of the people.
Well, the light's dipping now, so I might have had the best of it today. Hopefully I've got some good shots, but uh, I'm going to carry on now to see what I can get for sunset. Whilst these next images aren't abstract, they are what I originally set out to photograph. Now find out six things you can do to improve your landscape photography, no matter what your current level. Just download my free book with this link.